Hey, what's up? It's Vaslav here. In this video, I will answer one question you asking me on my Twitter account or in the comments under the videos. And this is how I automate my lights. I have a couple of automations and I'm going to show them to you. But the most interesting one is what I call single user mode. The way it works is when someone enters a bedroom or office, it will turn off the lights in the rest of the house. But uh, if this works, if this automation is in progress, if there is more people in at home, uh, that will be annoying, right? Because if I enter the office here and uh, there is someone else in the living room and the lights will go off, they won't like me, right? So uh, this only works, there's a condition, this only works if there is only one person at home. I do that in a note red, but uh, when I was showing this on Twitter, people were saying, oh, but in this case, I can't use it because I don't have note red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show it to you how it works in note red, but then we will recreate that in the standard uh, home assistant automation in YAML. So let's uh, get going. So let me show you first what I have in the note red. So there's a simple automation uh, which is triggered by lights in the bedrooms being turned on, right? So if I double click on that, if the light in Clara's bedroom is on, it will trigger this automation. And uh, I take triggers from all of those rooms and I feed them into this automation. The first thing what it does is I have this uh, flip uh, input boolean that is uh, basically enabling or disabling all automations for lights. So I'm checking that. And then I have this, uh, what I already mentioned, I'm checking if the sensor, which is counting number of people at home, is equal to one. Let me show you how the sensor looks like. So here's a sensor, it's a template sensor. And uh, the template sensor, it has a uh, list of entity IDs. So these are the people that uh, could be at home or not. So I'm checking those people. And then there is the template that calculates how many of those people are in with a state equal home. Let me show you how it works because I think it's uh, quite neat. I used to have a for loop that went through all the presence information and was counting, but I think this is much nicer. It's using the map attributes and then select equal home. So let me show you how this uh, template works. Let me go to the developer tools in templates and uh, let's start building it. So I'm starting with uh, states dot person. So this is going to give me the list of uh, all the persons, right? So this is the list. What I would like to do from there is I would like to get uh, the attribute. And if I would take entity ID, it will give me a list of all the entity IDs uh, of the type person, right? So you see them there. But I don't want to have entity ID. I would like to have a state. So this is the list of all the states. So you see four of them are home, one is not home. And what I can do is I can filter this list. So I will again pipe it and I will say that I would like to select only those that are equal home. So these are the four homes. And then from this list, I would just take the length and it will tell me four. So four people are home. And this is what the template does. Uh, no complicated for loops, uh, rather simple, clean line. So this sensor, if I look at it now, it will currently contain value four because there are four people at home. Uh, so I have this, so you see currently it's four. Uh, and here I have a condition. If this is one, it will continue. Uh, so in this case, it won't continue right now. So if one person is home, then I will turn off all the lights. And I have created this subflow for that. And what it does is it's gonna get entities and it's filtering them by entity ID is not message topic. Because when Node-RED triggers a flow, it will add the entity ID of the entity <coughs> that triggered this flow, it will add it to the topic. So it will essentially here run a list of all the light entity IDs except the one that triggered that. So we will do something similar in the YAML as well. And then from there on, I will just split this uh, into an array 
and then uh, uh, well, I'm checking if the light is on and I'm turning this light off and I'm taking the payload entity ID uh, which is generated by this get entities and that's all it does. Let's try to replicate that in the uh, in the YAML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to automations and I will start with uh, alias, uh, let's call it single user lights uh, and then let's add triggers and uh, I will add a platform state I will add the entity ID let's say light then uh, from state I don't think I need that and to state I will say on and here I will basically uh, copy and replicate all the lights that should trigger this automation. It might not be all the lights. I only want to add uh, triggers for the bedrooms uh, where people usually come and they stay there. I don't do that for the lights in the common spaces because if I turn on one light in the living room, I don't want to necessarily turn off all the other lights, right? So I only do that for uh, selected uh, lights. Here I will add condition and the condition would be a template and the template value will be state of the sensor people home. So this is our template sensor and we will look at the integer value and it has to be equal to one. So this is our condition. If there is one person at home, uh, this automation will carry on. Then we have action. And as an action, we will uh, call service light turn off. And then we will have data template. And the data template uh, will have entity ID. And uh, let's design this entity ID again in the developer tools. So we will start with states light. And again, we will use map to get the entity IDs. And from there, uh, we're not gonna use list. We will join that uh, with a comma. So here we have the list of all the light entity IDs. And so here we will uh, also do filtering. So we'll say select, and we want this to be not equal to uh, the trigger. So, uh, so to test that, I'm going to enter the atrium. And as you can see, atrium uh, isn't there. It was filtered out. Uh, so I'm gonna just copy this and I'm going to use that in my automation. But instead of this uh, light atrium, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to enter here trigger dot entity id and that's it so it was actually not that difficult wasn't it then i have uh, the obvious one uh, which probably most of you have uh, on the corridor if there is no movement for a certain time it will turn the light off uh, again this is easy to do in uh, standard home assistant automation but i'm doing it in uh, node as well so let me show you so this is the Automation for the motion sensor. I'm using the Autec Multi Sensor 6, which is a Z Wave sensor. If you search the internet, uh, you will find uh, very easily the configuration of the uh, YAML automation that is uh, turning lights on on the movement. So, uh, and the way it works is on the movement, it will change the sensor for burglar alarm uh, from 0 to 8. I don't know why they're using the burglar sensor, but apparently the sensor can have two values, eight for movement and three for vibration, for tampering. Uh, so this is what I'm doing, but I don't turn the lights on, but off. So what I'm looking for is if the value is changing from eight back to zero, so there is some time delay. And uh, if the automation is on, so this is my general uh, switch, uh, as I mentioned in here, and if the lights are still on, it will turn them off. Then I have two automations for the garage doors. If I open the garage doors and it's night, then it will turn on the lights in the garage. 
and uh, if I close the garage doors after some time it will uh, turn off the lights again let me show you so again very basic uh, triggered by the binary sensor which is a magnetic sensor on the garage door if it changes from on to off so the magnetic sensor gets disconnected that means the garage door is opening again uh, our favorite switch uh, I'm also looking at whether the lights are off and then I have a time range uh, from sunset to sunrise so I'm checking whether uh, the time is within sunset and sunrise so within a night and if it is it's turning the light on and for turning it off so again triggered by the door closing so the magnetic sensor will go from off to on uh, if the lights are on after two minutes so there is two minutes delay and if they are still on after two minutes it will turn them off then I have another simple automation uh, which turns off the lights if nobody is home and uh, what I also do is I check if the alarm is on just to make sure that uh, you know people are not home they just turn off their phones and all the lights would go off so they wouldn't like that as well so uh, I'm having this as a condition let me show you so this is how it looks if the uh, somebody home group turns from home to not home so nobody is home again our favorite switch and if the alarm is set it will turn all lights off can't be easier I suppose and then I have one special automation for two-way switch uh, in the living room where I have a light uh, that goes across two floors I have an opening in the living room that goes all the way to the ceiling of the second floor and there is a light and uh, when we did the house we didn't put the light switch on the second floor and it often happens is we leave this light on and we go up and then we realize that we forgot this line light on and we have to walk downstairs to turn it off so we didn't like that so I edit a sun off switch uh, upstairs it's not connected to anything but what it does is uh, when I uh, flip the switch it will toggle the main switch downstairs and toggle the light and I'm not doing it in home assistant automation I used to do that initially but then I have changed that to the uh, to a script in ESP home and uh, I must say it works much quicker it's instant you don't you won't notice that this is not actually a physical two-way switch so let me show you how it's done so let's go to my ESP home and there I have the uh, Itrium two-way switch and here it is when I toggle the uh, wall switch it will call the service light toggle for the main light downstairs so five lines of code very efficient much easier than uh, cutting the wall and pulling the uh, cable through between the two switches and that's uh, all I've got hope it helps bye